Mary lived in an imposing Georgian house of sand-colored brick with a formal portico at the front and neat clipped hedges lining the walkway. In back were her prize roses. Of all the things that Mary loved, her hybrid tea roses were secretly at the top of the list. When Mary was in her yard, with her perfect roses, it seemed that life itself was perfect. There were two things that seriously thwarted Mary's pursuit of perfection. First, there was her neighbor Isabel's garden. Lush, dense, and sensual, dominated by the whims of nature, not the firm hand of the gardener. Mary's other nemesis was her daughter Virginia. Virginia's dyed black hair, books of dark poetry, strange dissonant music and habit of crawling out her window at night to paint pictures of the moon were frightening to Mary and amusing to the townsfolk. Mary found that the easiest thing was just to concentrate on the things she could control, and she happily went on pruning and deadheading and spraying her roses. One fine summer afternoon, Mary was spraying her blue girl when she noticed something, something quick and silvery. It was a fairy, just a bit bigger than her hand and brown as an acorn with Hey, said the fairy. Would you quit spraying poison on these roses? It's drifting into the butterfly bush where we live. It's gross. I don't believe in fairies, she said. Mary put up a hand to ward him off, but he bit her with needle-like teeth. His saliva flowed into her blood. Mary was found on her lawn by Father Dingle because she missed a church committee meeting for the first time in her life. She spent four days completely insensible in Whistle Stop Memorial Hospital. Mary recovered her health rapidly. Then the incidents began. Strange incidents involving Mary and her daughter Virginia. That's not the whole story. Julie Carpenter always writes books that are better than the movie. This book is called Things Get Weird in Whistle Stop, a collection of magical short stories by Julie Carpenter.